There are actually quite a few things that contribute to the status of your oral health apart from brushing and flossing. Let's talk about it. Okay, number one on my list is stress. So stress is actually, it actually elicits an inflammatory response in our body. So just remember that word, inflammatory. Well, nowadays, as you may all know, we tend to be under chronic stress. So your body is under some sort of constant inflammation and our mouth is connected to the rest of our body. So if you're stressed out, you might find that your gums are more inflamed and in turn, your oral health is not doing so hot. All right, next on the list is nutrient deficiencies. Now, I feel like this one might go a little bit under the radar, especially for folks living you know, not in third world countries, but even in, you know, United States where I'm at, our food is so depleted in nutrients just because of mass production and poor soil quality that a lot of us are actually most likely deficient in some sort of nutrients if we're not supplementing with quality supplements. So things like vitamin K, vitamin C, B9, calcium, quality protein, CoQ10, all of these things affect our oral health. And so if we're deficient in them, that can manifest itself in our mouth even if we're brushing and flossing properly. Speaking of nutrient deficiencies, a little nugget of knowledge for you guys. If you're a woman and you're taking a birth control pill, that actually can deplete your vitamin B12 dramatically. And vitamin B12 also affects your oral health. So if you're taking a birth control pill, uh, maybe talk to your provider and ask about checking your B12 levels and maybe supplementing. Speaking of pills and medications, there are actually a lot of medications that can affect your oral health. To name a few, Dilantin, Phenytoin, basically any calcium channel blockers, I'm not a physician, um, I don't know all of the medications out there, but if you're taking medications, you know, maybe Google if the medication you're taking is a calcium channel blocker, that could definitely affect your oral health. Also, cyclosporin and prostate cancer medications, those are androgen blockers, um, so they mess with your hormones. So this is not an exhaustive list by any means, but just to give you an idea, if you are taking medications, maybe talk to your physician or your dentist to see if they affect your oral health and how you can manage that. Speaking of hormones, hormone imbalance. And no, I'm not just talking women or pregnant women. Men have hormones too. And if they're out of balance for whatever reason, that can definitely affect your oral health. Something as simple as sleep deprivation or fatigue can get your hormones out of whack, which can affect your oral health. I don't know why I'm smiling about this. It's not funny. I actually am dealing with insomnia myself. It's not fun. Won't, won't. All right, anyway, moving on. Uh, another thing that can affect your oral health is autoimmune or chronic inflammatory diseases. So there's that word again, inflammatory. So things like Hashimoto's or rheumatoid arthritis, uh, PCOS, Crohn's disease, lupus, MS, um, diabetes is a huge one. All of these are chronic inflammatory conditions. So as you uh, may recall when I talked about stress, inflammation in your body can directly affect your oral health. In terms of diabetes, especially like type 2 diabetes, that typically comes hand in hand with obesity. So obesity can affect your oral health as well. Now, small disclaimer here, I have treated overweight patients whose teeth actually look pretty good and their gum tissues are pretty healthy. So I wouldn't necessarily say being overweight is automatically going to put you in a category of having bad teeth. But I think the more the more we weigh, the more, for lack of better words, like the more damage we do to our organs with the extra fat, the worse they function and that affects our oral health. Another thing on the list is osteoporosis. So basically if you lose integrity of your bone, you know, our jaw is made up of bone and bone holds our teeth in our mouth. So if you lose integrity of your bone, you're at higher risk for developing periodontal disease. There's also lifestyle choices like smoking or alcohol use. Essentially smoking, you know, causes your tissues to get really calloused, not have good blood supply, easier for plaque to build up, harder to clean off. That can put you at a higher risk for developing periodontal disease. Also alcohol, first of all, it's a poison. From a more practical or technical maybe standpoint, um, alcohol itself actually dries out our mouth. I don't know if you've noticed if you've had a fun night, uh, the next morning your mouth is super dry. Uh, alcohol dries our mouth out and that contributes to faster plaque buildup, harder to clean off. This is another reason why we recommend people use mouthwash without alcohol. It kind of has this opposite effect of what we're trying to achieve with mouthwash, right? And we're trying to like clean the teeth and have better oral health, but alcohol itself dries your mouth out. So don't get mouthwash with alcohol. Another thing on the list is viruses. 
Um, for example, herpes or HPV, human papillomavirus. Again, our body is constantly fighting a virus, so it affects our oral health. Everything is connected. And then lastly, strategically <laughs> chosen to be last because I find that this is where people get really hung up, is genetics. You might just be genetically more prone to be a higher risk for perio. I do really want to stress this quote that I keep telling patients uh, over and over again is genetics load the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. I actually kind of want to use that saying as an umbrella for most, if not all of these other conditions that I listed. Essentially, yes, there are certain things that can make you more prone or higher risk for developing periodontal disease or cavities or just having bad oral health, but that doesn't mean you can't necessarily do anything about it. I would maybe even say quite the opposite. If you have one of these conditions, it might be key to look at not just brushing and flossing, well, especially brushing and flossing properly and consistently, you know, every day. If you guys need help with that, I have made a couple of videos showing on my own teeth how to do that correctly, but also potentially supplementing or changing some lifestyle habits, you know, exercising more, drinking more water, maybe figuring out ways how to lower the stress, basically tackling whatever you can, whatever in your control to achieve optimal oral health. But anyway, I hope this video did not overwhelm you guys, but instead kind of empowers you to make maybe certain changes in your life that are within your control to achieve optimal oral and overall health. So again, make sure to drop your questions or comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care of your teeth and your whole self, all of you. Bye.